Oh, sometimes people call me Crypto Indio. It really kind of depends where we are and how much information I want you to have about myself. So <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> to Paul and to Permission for putting this together. Meetups are my get down. They're my jam. Um, physical interaction is immensely important, and we saw a lot of that go away in 2020 with the panorama. I'm sure most of you are familiar with that. And I have to, I'm very accustomed to saying panorama because I'm on YouTube and that darn censorship. But if you're sitting in the audience today, if you're here, you're even at this meetup, you are doing yourself a service and you're doing your families a service and you're doing your communities a service because, because you are starting to fall down the rabbit hole and understand about self-custody. You're, uh, you're able to understand about being self-sovereign, freedom, and all of the legalized cartels that we're currently fighting against. And I know that sounds, it sounds terrible. <laughs> But that's what it is, that's the truth. And if you're here, you are probably also opting out with Bitcoin, which is absolutely outstanding. And I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist, I support all cryptocurrencies. I think that cryptocurrency, especially altcoins, they're very, very pivotal into mass adoption. And mass adoption is important because when we talk about mass adoption, we're not just talking about people getting Lambos and people getting rich and people, you know, like crazy wealth. We're really talking about the average person, your, yourself, your kids, your parents, your aunts, your uncles, your community, getting a better quality of life or getting access to a better quality of life. And that's one of the main things that kind of got me excited about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. I remember, well, I probably should tell you guys a little bit about myself, huh? That would be important. I get carried away and I'm actually not the best public speaker. I don't like being on camera. I don't like being in front of people, but here we are. Um, so I am, I wanna say I'm the third or fourth top female crypto YouTuber globally in the world, which is pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> the channel's getting ready to break 100,000 subscribers and it's, pretty surreal knowing that at any time I can have 100,000 people watch any one of my videos and listen to what I have to say, which is really, really cool. Um, I'm also a mom. I have a five-year-old daughter, and part of the, what I do is for her because, as we know, this is a male-dominated space, and that's okay. Men are awesome, women are awesome, and everything in between is awesome, but it's really cool to have additional female representation because women matter too, and our daughters our nieces are the future. And I really think that mass adoption is going to occur with this next generation, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, I started crypto, I bought my first part of a Bitcoin because you know you can buy a first portion or a part of a Bitcoin, a Satoshi. And you don't have to have that $55,000 or $56,000 or whatever we're currently trading at. So I bought a little bit of Bitcoin, Ethereum and Litecoin. And I just remember, I'd heard about it in 2011, but I was like, I'm not smart enough to do this. I didn't come from a math background. I didn't come from a STEM background. I didn't come from a place that really, you go to college and you would become like a computer engineer or whatever. I just didn't think I was smart enough to do that. And maybe it was because some of the stuff that I grew up around or I lived through, but whatever. But 2011, heard about Bitcoin, decided not to buy any because it was just, I didn't think I was smart enough. But in actuality, if you put your mind to things and you believe in yourself and you just continue to try, even if crypto is hard, because we know crypto is really hard, it's not easy. How many people can raise their hand and say that they understand every part of crypto, every part of the crypto ecosystem? Okay, I see you over there. <laughs> because crypto is complicated, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But I remember buying my first part of Bitcoin crypto on Coinbase, 2017, I was at my job. I was working healthcare. I worked in HIV AIDS. I serviced two to 300 patients per month. I coordinated their care, made sure they were taking their medication, make sure that they were, you know, doing okay. A lot of my clients had severe mental health issues and other issues along associated with that. And I was in school to become a pharmacist because I was like, yay, $100,000 a year. That's dope. Like, this is great. But then student loan debt was $300,000. So I was like, does that really make sense math-wise? Should it check out? It really didn't. So I ended up changing my major to business, and I decided that I was going to quit my job and finish school full time. And then I was really, really entrepreneurial at the time. I wanted to either buy a donut shop or a bar or bring the two together. I just wanted to be, I wanted to be close to home. 
I was commuting two to three hour round trip daily. And I was also pregnant when I was doing that. And if any of you in the crowd audience have been pregnant, you know that it's not fun to have to sit in a car for that long. Especially, <laughs> it's just not fun. It's not something you want to do. So after my daughter came, I was like, you know what? I have to do something. I can't just do this, work the four 10 hour shifts, like something has to give. So I got really tired. Um, the corporation started kind of putting profit over people. And that wasn't something that I was interested in because I love my patients. I love my clients. A lot of them were family and friends to me. I just adored them. So I made the hard choice to quit my job. And I remember I walked into a TD Ameritrade and I said, let me, let me go ahead and invest. I want to invest. And they said, well, you need $25,000 to invest. And I felt stupid. I felt poor. I felt very like, like shit really, really made me feel terrible about myself. Cause I just felt like I wasn't like a part of their little whatever. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to trade stonks. Cause I thought maybe I could invest and I can get rich that way. Well, it doesn't work that way because you know, crypto is a crypto is super robust. It's different. So it was no to that. So then after I kept hearing about Bitcoin and libertarian radio, and then I went to Coinbase because that was pretty much all that was available at that time. There was maybe a thing or two other exchanges. Were you guys selling Bitcoin back in 2017 on the on the wallet? Yeah. Okay. All right. So there, so so there's Coinbase and Edge Wallet, and that's the only place you can buy Bitcoin. <laughs> it's the only place you can get Bitcoin. So you had to come see Paul yourself walk into the office. I'm just kidding. So those those are the really like the options. And then I remember I bought it and then I fell just, I fell down the rabbit hole and I fell down the ecosystem and I just was like, this is so cool. Like I get to actually own my money. I get to actually trade when I want to. I get to do what I want with my money when I want. I get to have full custody. I don't have to like rely on a bank. I don't have to rely on a corporation to tell me what to do. And I'm a Leo. I don't like to be told what to do. I don't. If you tell me what to do, I will literally do the opposite. That's the, just the type of person I am. So any type of like anything online, if you'd say something negative about me, I will turn around and I will do the opposite. And that's why I'm still in crypto. But anyways, and I just remembered like reading all this stuff and reading Satoshi's white papers like this is dope. And then I found altcoins and I was like, these are really, really cool because they do different things. They have all this utility and it's not just Bitcoin. It's not just slow. And that was exciting for me. Well, Bitcoin is great. Bitcoin is an outstanding store of value, but in reality, it is volatile and it is slow. It is not an ideal currency that you want to use for day-to-day -day purchases. And that's okay. Everything has its place. And it's good to celebrate things for what they are. So if there's any maximalists in here, I do box. So if you want to go outside, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I'm then, I, then I saw, and then I joined Crypto Twitter because a friend of mine was like, you have to get on here. And I was like, okay, whatever. And I used to hang out with musicians in Hollywood. So I was used to degeneracy and all that stuff. These guys didn't phase me at all. And they still don't phase me at all because my stories surpass their stories. But anyways, that's, that's a story for, a, that's, a, that's a novel for another time. Yeah, that's, that's we'll, we'll do a book one day. Um, but then I saw these guys posting charts, all these cartoon characters. I was like, this is freaking dope. Like, these guys are making money. So then I taught myself how to trade because I was like, if they can do it, I can do it too. And I taught myself how to trade, and then I started doing okay. And then I noticed in Southern California in L.A., because I'm born and bred Los Angeles, California, and I noticed there was all these meetups on meetup.com, but there wasn't, like, like, places where we can go like this, where you can literally go and talk to people. It was like you had to stand, like, even though I'm standing up here talking, and I'm going to let you guys talk too, and if you want, anyone wants to interrupt me, please do, because I don't like to hear myself talk. But anyways... But all these other meetups, and maybe Paul can attest to this, but all these other meetups, you'd have to pay like 100 bucks to get in, and then they would show you their coin, their ICO. And I'm like, this is stupid. Like, if I want to invest in your coin, like, I'll do it, but I don't want to pay to hang out with like-minded people. I want to just be around like-minded people and learn and network. So then I decided to start hosting my own meetups, and I've hosted over four dozen free meetups um, from in Los Angeles. I've done some in San Diego, in Canada, in New York, Chicago, Florida, a couple other places. 
So I've done that because I think that everybody deserves equal access to information, to education, and everybody, regardless of race, income, creed, what sex, whatever it is, everybody deserves to be able to be around the same group of people. And that's what crypto and Bitcoin is. It's about being able to break down those barriers, break down those wealth gaps, and just vibe with everybody to get along and to learn. That's the beauty of it. And that's what really drew me together is because if you want to be anonymous online, you can be, or if you want to be out like me and have your face out there, you can, whatever you feel comfortable doing. So I did that. And then I started doing technical analysis meetups always for free. And then I started the YouTube channel and I had people like, Hey, we'll pay you for an interview. And I was like, hell yeah, let me disclose this and make some money and be a stay at home mom. And then it just kind of like snowballed into this thing where I saw all these problems that needed solving. And part of those problems were transparent marketing and crypto. Part of those problems were linking people together. So I do a lot of marketing. I do a lot of linking. I do a lot of contracts in the background and it's just really utilizing the network that I have. So if you're sitting here today, or even if you're standing over there, not even listening to me, go to as many in-person networking events as possible. Go to as many in-person networking events as possible. And the reason why you want to do this is you want to make eye contact with everybody. You want to shake their hand and you want to learn from them. You want them in your network because you never know what somebody is going to do with their life in the next year, the day, or maybe 10 years from there. And you might not know. They might end up being a friend to you or being an ally or being a positive force in your like little ecosystem. You never, never know. Maybe one day you decide you want to start a business. And you're just in a chat with somebody like, hey, I want to do X, Y, and Z. And they're like, oh, well, I know this person. Let me link you. And then all the linking, all the things happened. So that's why these are so, so important to do. So again, thank you guys for putting this together. And thank you for being here. But that's just a little bit about me, what I do. And I've got the YouTube channel. We do daily news. I do TikToks, fun stuff. And really, my content is about education. And I like to keep things simple. I like to keep things simple, and the reason why is because there's more people like myself that come from the lower middle class, the middle class, the poor, than there are these super tech savvy guys. No offense to any super shady, dark shadow or coder guys, okay? No offense. But it is important because I just remember when, like I always remember going back to that TD Ameritrade and how stupid they made me feel because I didn't have, oh, I had $25,000, but it was for school. It wasn't for them. And I just remember how stupid and like how poor they made me feel. And I was like, I'm never going to feel like this again. This is dumb. And I, you know, I felt like that different times in my life, how I grew up, you know, whatever. But it's just so important to break things down as easily as possible. And the reason why is crypto is complicated. It is so, so complicated. All the different terms, NFT, non-fungible token. Who the heck calls a digital, a JPEG, a piece of art, a non-fungible token? It sounds pretty complicated. It sounds pretty scary. I mean... If I didn't know about crypto, I'd be like, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to touch this. This is too scary for me. I can't do it. That was my mom growing up. My mom loved her to death. But my mom was always like, oh, I can't do that. It's not, it's not, you know, I'm not this or I'm not that. But realistically, if you're here today and you are just, even if you don't own Bitcoin or crypto and you're excited about it, take 10 minutes. Because I know all you sitting in here. I know all of you are either working or you watch Netflix, you do something, you're on the internet surfing, y'all are on TikTok, whatever the heck you're doing. Take 10 minutes and dedicate it to yourself and invest in yourself and learn more about something, whether it's trading, whether it's NFTs, whether it is, I don't know, DeFi mining or not mining, but DeFi pools, that kind of stuff where you degen out or just using like apps that you can earn passive income on. There's so many different ways in crypto you can make money. It's not just exclusive to trading anymore. You can use permission. You can use permission. You can literally use their 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 stuff and you can earn passive income by doing nothing. Nothing. Where else in the world? Where else in the world? What other industry can you use these different apps like permission, like like FTX um, US to stake? to with nfts where else can you use stuff for, for free almost and earn passive income where i don't know crypto i've been able to make a decent amount of money in crypto by trying different things and by you know practicing risk management all that type of stuff but there's so many different opportunities in crypto to make money you're not j like in 2017 2018 unless you were a coder unless you had a startup unless you knew how to trade those are the only ways to make money but now we have nfts and nfts are so beautiful nfts really really and we're not, I'm not talking about nfts on ethereum because we all know ethereum gets drunk sometimes and she likes to cost people a lot of money. She likes to make y'all spend your money, okay? 
but Ethereum is expensive. There's other chains. There's Wax and there's Solana. Um, all these different types of chains, all the Binance Smart Chain stuff, you can mint NFTs there. And the thing, cool thing about NFTs are is that you can use them to raise money for charities and the royalties. The royalties are so outstanding. Like me hanging out with the musicians that I used to hang out with, some of them are so talented back in like their bands were from like the 80s and 90s, early 2000s. And there's something called uh, merchandising rights and licensing rights, those types of things. And what happens is when you're a musician or you're an artist, you get these predatory people that come to you when you start getting well known. And they're like, and they know that your stuff is going to be worth $10 million one day, but they'll come up to you and they'll be like, I'll give you $50,000. Let me buy your licensing rights. And once they buy those, they take them from you forever. So you're not getting royalties. You're not getting anything. But NFTs are able to disrupt that industry, just like how Bitcoin is able to disrupt the financial industry and the way altcoins are as well, which is outstanding. And plus the passive income that we're able to earn now just by holding. You get your moon bag. Do, does anybody know what a moon bag is? One person? That's it? Ramon knows. Okay. Hey, hey, girl, how are you? All right, so I'm going to tell you what a moon bag is, and this is like your key. This is like some serious alpha here. A moon bag is, is when you invest in a cryptocurrency or you invest in, or you're actively trading it, is when you remove your initial investment out and your profit up when the thing goes up. Because a lot of people will tell you, hold, hold, hold. You're going to get wrecked if you hold. Most of this stuff's not going to be here in six months, a year from now. But if you believe in a project and you like it, why not remove your initial investment and remove your profit? And then whatever you own free and clear is a moon bag. So there's no risk. There's no emotions attached to it. So if this thing goes to zero, you're like, hey, this was fun. Let me do it again. But what you want to do with your capital, after you pull this capital out, your profits, you want to go ahead and put it into something else and keep rinsing and repeating. Then you can get that and stake that. It's a pretty fun thing. But I kind of want to talk a little bit about what's going on with the SEC because we all know there's some stuff. Is anybody familiar with the news that's going on recently? Yeah. Coinbase. Coinbase. I'm not the biggest Ripple fan, but I do have mad respect for them for sticking it to the man. It feels really, really good to see them have more money than they've got a lot of money, and they're actually out there advocating for us. So you can love or hate Ripple, you can love or hate XRP, but the fact that they're out there and they're fighting for our freedom, essentially, it's pretty dope. Like, how cool is that? Like, we're in the we're making history right now. We have people like Coinbase and more notably XRP Ripple that are out here and they're just they're really doing the good work and they're sticking up for us because right now we're in a pretty pivotal time. It's like the SEC is like said that Bitcoin and Ethereum aren't securities, but everything else is. But then they give gave Coinbase licenses to conduct you know, to do exchange stuff to be money transmitters. But then now they're saying everything on the exchanges are securities. Like, how does that work? Like one plus one is two the last time I checked and a lot of this stuff doesn't make sense. So the important thing is to become aware of what's going on. It's important to know what's happening in the news. Obviously, you got to pick and choose what you believe and always do your due diligence. You want to follow the money. But it's important to note that our freedom is kind of under duress right now. <laughs> Last time I checked on the show, we reported today um, that the current administration, they want to go ahead and get, I think, if you send a transaction over $600, they want you to report that. $600? I don't even think you can, what can you buy in Los Angeles for $600? Maybe that's like a cup of coffee. I'm just kidding. I don't know. It's, expen it's very, very expensive to live in L.A., but they want to know what you're doing with your $600. What happens if I want to take out $600 and give it to my mom? And my mom wants to get new blinds or something. That's not their business. I don't want to be like, I gave it to my mom so that she can pay her bills. Like, like that's not her business. Like, it's nobody's business. But I think it's important that we, regardless of our differences, we kind of unite and we kind of come together and we kind of, you know, stand up to what's going on and pay attention. And another thing I want to add is, as I know everybody's got their political bias and that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. But at the same time too, when you really kind of dissect everything that's going on, it's not about this party or this party or this person. It's really about all of us and our personal freedom. Do you guys? <laughs> Do you value your freedom? Do you value your money? Like, you guys work hard. I work hard. I work really, really hard for my money. I'm sure you guys do too. Everybody works hard. Everybody deserves a really good quality of life. But we have these people kind of like coming in telling us what we can and can't do with our money. And it's like, 
why why am I not allowed to stake my Bitcoin or my stable coins? They came and going after stable coins. Who does that? <laughs> it's like they said that I think one of them said that stable coins are dangerous. And I'm like <laughs> I'm like stable coins are dangerous. You want to protect me from stable coins. You want to protect me <laughs> You want to protect me from buying a stable coin, putting it on a platform where I can earn passive income that pays me 4 to like 10% back and that's just a centralized stage. Obviously you can degen out, you can use one of the DeFi farms and that's okay if you've got the risk tolerance. I don't Personally, I prefer not to. I like to hold on to my money. I don't want to get a flash loan. I don't want to, you know, make a human error or whatnot. But that's that's like a real threat to our freedom. And I kind of feel like we've all gotten things taken away from us um, to different extents the last couple of years. And I get it. And I'm not here to, to knock that or knock what's going on with that. But I'm more important about my money. I want to keep my money. I want to pass my money down. I want to do what I want to do with my money. And I do think that Bitcoin does give that opportunity, and so does crypto. And it's not just about Bitcoin. Bitcoin's dope as a store of value. But all these other cryptocurrencies, they all do really, really cool things. Really, really cool things. And I personally believe, you guys can agree or disagree with me, but I believe if we did not have altcoins, Bitcoin wouldn't be where it's at today. And because when you have, when you just have one person, when you just have one or one entity, that's just kind of there, it's vibing, like everybody knows what it is. It's not really that enticing. You're just like, uh, whatever. But with the, with the introduction of altcoins, there's competition because now we have Ethereum and Ethereum does all this cool stuff with smart contracts and you can do NFTs and you can build on top of it and you can just do really cool stuff. And then we've got Solana, we've got the DOT ecosystem, we've got all these different like use cases, these different utilities. So then the Bitcoin developers, okay, like we got to step our game up, we got to do X, Y, and Z. And then we're, we're now we're seeing all this competition between all these different chains like Ethereum and Solana and DOT and whatever else, whatever else I missed, because this is all from the fly right now. But I really believe that without altcoins, then we wouldn't have all this really cool stuff that's going on with, with Bitcoin. Because we have Taproot, we had Segway, that happened a while back. We have all these really cool platforms now that do different things with Bitcoin. So I think it's awesome, I like altcoins. Do you guys like altcoins? Yeah. Okay, so we don't have too many maximalists here, right? <laughs> I don't have to meet anybody outside after this. And again, I do, again, I do box, I do. I've been boxing since I was 16. And you wanna know what another really cool thing about crypto is? The crypto community, there was a charity that was a nonprofit that was very, very dear, near and dear to my heart. We were able to raise close to $60,000 for this nonprofit through like my network in crypto. And it's pretty cool, like really, really cool. <laughs> and do you wanna know what the best part about that is? About, it was a bo the boxing gym I go to, the self-care lab in Pomona, California, because I lived in Pomona. I don't know if a lot of you know where Pomona is, but it's a fun, it's a fun, it's a fun place. Five minutes, okay. Well. Before before I'm done talking, I just want to say the reason why I talked about the money raised for the, the nonprofit was because I was able to introduce Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, NFTs, blockchain technology to a group of people that never in their life probably would hear about it prior to that. The owner goes to her family events, is like, look what we have. And she talks about Bitcoin. And then she shows the kids, look what we have. And the kids are asking questions. How do I make money? How do I do this? And they're asking her questions. They're asking me questions. And we're able to expose a whole entire community of people, subgroup of community of people, to these really cool asset classes that are just like life changing. So really the moral of the story is, for my big long speech, it probably never led to anywhere, just me rambling, because that's what I do, um, was that the best way to to Bitcoin or to crypto is to kind of gift it to other people. That's how people learn. To go to as many in-person events, to network, to talk to people, to learn about other people, to keep them in your network, and just to keep doing good by other people. And take 10 minutes out of your t day and research something in crypto that you were like, mm, I'm not really interested in this, but just learn about it, why not? You never know, You might that 10 minutes that you spend might actually turn into a career opportunity for you because that's what it did for me. I was able to change my entire life and come from a wealth class, or change wealth classes because of 
Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And in a million years, if you thought, if, if you asked me if I was going to be speaking in front of a group of people, I would have a YouTube channel, I would do any of this stuff, I would have said, you are absolutely insane. So take risks and that's it. Oh, that's a really tough question. What does it stand for? It's like a like the cute little doggy that's coming around. That's that's a do that's Doge. Questions for Crypto One DL. Here we go. What was your best trade and your worst trade? Oh, my best trade actually. Well, it was more like a. I'm gonna say investment. Because I guess the best trade I ever made was when Bitcoin bottomed out and I longed and I longed all the way from, I forgot what it was, but I longed all the way close to like 40,000. It was pretty cool. And then I closed it because I was like, this is like getting stupid now. And it just was ridiculous. Um, but I had an investment, something I dumped a thousand dollars into. And this thing, it's still, it's still up. Like I have a really fat moon bag of it and it's like insane. And the wor one of the worst trades ever was I was really tired. I was angry and my daughter was crying because she was little then. I was frustrated and I was hungry, all these things. And I decided to, to trade. So of course, like that's always a good idea, right? You trade when you're like hungry, tired, your kids screaming, like eating goldfish and craisins, telling me, walking in my room to the office doing this. Um, but what happened was, I think it was a bag of OMG. I think I just sold, I was, I was getting pissed off because it wasn't moving, and this was when I first started trading, I sold it. And then I was like, well, I want to get back in. And then I switched it for a different, tried to use a different trading pair. And then I sold, I forgot to put a zero in and I sold it for like, or I tried to get in or get out. And it just, yeah, it was just stupid. So don't trade when you're hungry. Back here. Hello. Thank you, Wendy. Who was the most uh, interesting uh, person you've interviewed or company or project you've interviewed that you've learned the most from? Hmm. Great question. That's a good one. Well, I have to say... Uh, and then in addition to that, the most interesting people that I get on my show are obviously people like Charlie, people like Paul, like those types of people are really great because I get to like hang out with really rich people and I'm like, this is so weird. Um, but I've had Sam from FTX on. He's absolutely very, he's, he's like probably the dopest person in crypto ever. And I like to interview attorneys. I think it's so much fun to get crypto attorneys on. They're fun. Well, the ones in crypto are because... They're the smart ones that have left their other regular crappy jobs. <laughs> um, a question over here to the guy who knows everything about crypto. <laughs> yeah, so on that note, have you heard of Floki Token? Oh, okay, okay, Elon. <laughs> okay, Elon. Any, anybody else, or can I can I like grovel off stage? Well, okay, one more one more question, and then we're gonna do some final announcements. I, I watch your channel, and I really appreciate you the education you give everybody. Um, I and recently I know that you were dealing with some tax issues, and mm -hmm. not that I need tax advice from you, but I just what kind of record keeping should we be doing? If if you can comment on that, if not, you know I can I can talk to you later or whatever, but. What might, what would be a, a thing to avoid or to make sure we're capturing and when we do trades just to stay ready for the tax so issues? So crypto taxes suck, and I'm still working on my 2020 taxes because the person I hired to do those is just they didn't do what they're supposed to do. But anyways, they're getting filed, and we pay our taxes on every single thing ever with crypto because I'm not trying to do time over something ridiculous. But um, they, which you can do, it depends if you're an LLC or an S Corp, you need to read, and I actually, that's a question for Paul. Um, if you're utilizing an exchange for those purposes, you need to make sure you have your EIN or TIN in there so you can like get those tax things. Um, also too, if you're not, if you're just kind of like a passive investor, or just kind of vibing, um, you want to probably utilize a service like Zen Ledger or any of the other crypto tax things. And the reason why is they will, um, you get to plug all your APIs in and you get to plug any addresses from from like the MetaMask or Phantom wallet and it'll kind of tell you when, like is this a good idea if I sell this now or not? And then when you go see your CPA or whoever's doing your taxes, you say here, 
and then you run away, and then you just pay whatever they tell you to pay. <laughs> not just better to sell on offshore company like they don't see you and that's something for your cpa not me <laughs> no no like I if something then i don't just have nothing you know and like i'm just from another country and i can j register as uh, another resident and they don't see me <laughs> sir this is a wendy's i don't know <laughs> None of this was tax or investment advice. <laughs> but it sounds like you might need a uh, attorney. No, just kidding. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for Wen Wendy. Round of applause for Wendy.